My name is Valerie Capus. I'm a scientist and head of the Climate Change and Biodiversity Program at the UN Environment Program's World Conservation Monitoring Center. And I'm here to answer some of your questions on global warming and climate change. What the Paris Agreement does is it commits the 194 countries that signed up to it to make every effort to keep global temperature rises this century below two degrees Celsius, and ideally to limit them to 1.5 degrees Celsius. It also commits countries to ensure that the world adapts to even those levels of climate change and to ensure that financing is made available to achieve those aims. The agreement defines adaptation as the capability of countries to enhance adaptive capacity and resilience, that is their ability to respond to climate change, and their ability to reduce vulnerability, the degree to which citizens and infrastructure and other assets are vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. The agreement requires all parties um, to engage in adaptation planning and implementation through national plans and studies and monitoring and generally to prepare for those effects of climate change that we know are coming. Well, that's hard to say. We've made a lot of progress over the last decade, especially at the national level. But globally, um, I don't think anybody really thinks we're doing enough. And that's partly because we've been focusing very critically on um, slowing down climate change. And there's been a bit of a lag in focusing on adaptation. So we are now needing, and the Paris Agreement is partly a recognition of that, to accept that some level of climate change really is happening and we really do need to put adaptation measures in place. And we're beginning to see some action on that, both from national governments and from international funding institutions and processes. So nature-based solutions is a term which has relatively recently come into vogue and it's defined as the protection, management and restoration of ecosystems to meet societal challenges and provide positive benefits for biodiversity. In the context of climate change, the way we talk about nature-based solutions include actions that help us to reduce climate change, to mitigate it, and actions that help us to adapt to climate change or protect against its impact. One example of this would be restoring mangroves along the coasts to help reduce the impacts of coastal flooding that we expect as a result of climate change. So reduce those impacts on coastal communities, cities and infrastructure. We hear most about nature-based solutions in the context of mitigation so far. So we hear a lot about protecting forests, making sure that we don't emit by converting forests to other land uses, and restoring forests so that that's the sequestration of carbon as those forests grow removes um, greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. But increasingly, uh, adaptation is a, is a focus for nature-based solutions, and people are realizing that the nature-based solutions provide a key point of linkage between mitigation and adaptation. Anything that manages natural ecosystems sustainably, or indeed restores them, is going to have positive benefits for mitigation, and most often will have positive benefits for adaptation, and targeting those adaptation actions where people and assets are vulnerable to climate change impacts is really critical.